Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, as Mary says, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my uh, experience with um, stopping uh, TKI therapy, and in, uh, <clears throat> specifically uh, going on the, the DESTINY trial. Um, and, I, and to do that, I do just have to do a little brief history and background um, to, to me and my sort of CML journey, so to speak. I was diagnosed in May 2009. I was one of those diagnosed completely by chance, went into the doctor with one thing, came out with something else. Um, and I went straight on to imatinib at the standard dose of 400 milligrams. Um, I'm what's described as a hare. Uh, I had a very quick, a very deep uh, and durable response. Um, just to, to indicate that, uh, I got to uh, what we no longer call undetectable, but basically all zeros in my PCR report uh, within six months, which is incredibly quick anyway and very quick for imatinib. But I should um, say at the outset, and I think as we're going to hear, I'm sure, later this afternoon, you don't need to be a hare uh, to stop treatment. As an interested patient, um, I read an awful lot about CML, uh, about what was going on in research, um, and about uh, stopping trials. I was aware of the trials uh, in France uh, and in Australia, um, and I started having discussions about a possible UK trial with my uh, consultant at the Hammersmith. I, I can't really remember when, but I think it was about 2012. It goes back a long time. Certainly serious discussions in 2013, um, uh, and I know it took quite a long time for the trial to come about. But eventually, uh, Destiny was offered to me uh, in 2014. And my consultant, I think, was quite keen um, to, not encouragement, it's the wrong word, but, but for me to give serious thought to it. Um, I think because I'd had such a good response and it had been so stable. So why did I choose to go on Destiny? Um, a number of reasons. I mean, I was diagnosed at 42. I had, uh, my children were what, seven and nine at the time. Um, and I was in at least two minds about it. Um, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Uh, imagine it working really well for me. Whilst I had side effects, and I'll, I'll talk about those in a minute, they weren't that bad by the time uh, the stopping trial uh, came about. They'd largely tapered off. Um, but I did have nausea. Um, in particular, if I'd got it wrong, in other words, if I'd taken it without having a big meal uh, or too long after a meal, um, and, and that was pretty horrid. I, I got into a routine um, which by and large avoided that problem, but when it did come, it was horrible. Um, I had had cramps. They'd eased off, uh, certainly by the time I got to thinking about stopping, but they were still there. Um, Gastric issues, I'll call it gastrointestinal turbulence um, <laughs> of a variety of kinds, uh, in, but including reflux and pain from, from, uh, from, from, from the gut, but also the other one we all know about. I had chills. Um, they weren't multiplying, so to speak. Um, but that was quite a weird one. You're suddenly feeling incredibly cold, and the only way I could warm up was going to have a hot shower. Um, I put on a bit of weight. Um, I've never been, uh, I've never been overweight. I've had sort of weight distribution issues, as I call them. Um, but I, I put on a little bit of weight. I don't know whether that was to do with imatinib or whether that was just me not looking after myself as well as I should have done. Um, I had forgotten about fatigue. Uh, it's interesting, I was saying to Alistair earlier that after so much time, and I've now been off therapy for some time, um, I'd kind of forgotten what the side effects were, and actually the ones I'd had. And one I had forgotten was fatigue, um, which I had at the, at the beginning. And the other one, which I don't think I ever talked about um, to my consultant, but one of the slides earlier made me think about it, was, was a renal issue. My, um, my renal function was not brilliant um, during taking imatinib, and it's completely normal now, and has been since I stopped. So that... Side effects was, was certainly a consideration. I think almost the biggest one for me was, was freedom from the imatinib regime. Now, it's once a day, big deal, but with the gastrointestinal turbulence issues, um, I, I always took mine in the evening after dinner, 
because if I had a problem, it was going to be two or three hours later. Um, um, as my profession, I'm a lawyer. I did not want to have that sort of issue in the middle of a hearing in court, for example, having to sort of make excuses and run out the door. So I'd settled on an evening regime, but I also travel quite a lot, certainly did at the time. And with the time zone issue and time of day issue, trying to work out when to take things, um, getting away from you know, having to have a substantial meal every evening. I didn't always want one, frankly, but I had to do it with you know, potatoes or pasta or something stodgy just to soak it all up. Getting away from that was something I quite looked forward to. <laughs> Um, for me, I felt it was a useful thing for me to do. Say my consultant had me down as a, um, a good candidate. Um, I'd done very well. I felt extremely grateful to all the people throughout the sort of history of CML um, who, who got us to where we are. Um, and I felt if I can help, then uh, why not? And by the time Destiny came around, all the signs were that, f for me certainly, it appeared to be low risk. Um, so I went on to half dose uh, at the start of the trial in April 2014 I think I was the second patient at the Hammersmith to go on Destiny I might be wrong but I think I was the second one um, and to the extent I still had side effects they went away incredibly quickly cramps went um, my gastric issues went um, and, and I found the regime much easier um, I actually had uh, when I first did these slides, I put smaller pills next to it because um, I was on the sort of the horse pill imatinib, um, which was, you know, that you know, people talk about the taste. It was more than taste. It was sort of internal taste. I just really didn't like it. The small ones never had that issue. My results, um, I, I, I've sort of, I got my, my latest sort of BCR able cumulative report uh, uh, the other day, and, and basically I had... All, all zeros for a long period of time, nothing other than zero. Um, they're essentially, they, they, they're the, they were the same. I, st I had a couple of positives. Now, I, I put positive in quotation marks because uh, I think um, there's a debate as to whether the results were real. I mean, I, I, 0 0.001 or 0 0.002 from 0 0.000, they may well not have been uh, real positive. So I say essentially no change. I suspect um, my consultant thinks there's, there, there is no change, and I'm sure she's right. Um, and my weight began, began to come down. Now, I think that's a combination of things. At the time, I started doing a lot more exercise. So I, I, I run a lot. So my weight has come, uh, has come significantly down. I, I, but I think matinib or stopping or reducing matinib is part of that. So um, under the protocol for the trial, I stopped in May 2015. Um, no further change in side effects because basically I didn't really have any by that stage. I had no withdrawal symptoms. I know people have had withdrawal symptoms when they come off imatinib, uh, bone pain as I understand it. I, I had nothing. I was essentially back to normal by then. Again, results essentially no change. They're, they're all the still ma mainly zeros. I've had a couple of, of 0 0.001s. Um, and I began to forget imatinib. I began to forget the fact that I had to remember to take it. Um, I never missed a dose, took every dose. I, I reproduced a couple, <laughs> <coughs> but I never missed a dose. And, um, and, I, and I, I, always, I always felt, um, I, I couldn't really imagine why you would ever miss a dose, frankly, face, face with it. But I know, you know people have intolerance issues and the rest of it, but I, I didn't miss one. So I, I had... Uh, during the course of my of stopping, really begun to forget about it. Um, so, uh, for me, the trial ended uh, in May of last year. Um, I'm still off imatinib. Results are the same. Uh, to the extent that I've ever been normal, I feel normal. Um, I'm confident about where I am and, and about what the CML does or doesn't mean to me. Um, I understand one of the sentiments that was put up earlier about, you know, being a cancer patient but not having any, no, in my case, never having had any visible signs of it. Um, but I'm not complacent about it. I, I, I you know, it's, it's still in the back of my mind. I'm still aware that I had that diagnosis. I'm still aware that I'm always going to be seen for it and 
Uh, you know, I, I, I can't be complacent, but I feel pretty confident about where I am. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I, I took the plunge to do it. So what would I say to others about stopping? Um, obvious one, take your time in the decision. It's a big decision to do it. Um, as I say, so my, my children by that stage were for early, mid-teens, I suppose. Um, and I think if they'd been younger, uh, I probably would have waited. Um, it's interesting that uh, we heard earlier about, you know, um, whether, you, whether you do or don't change to a second generation, something not to think about maybe if, if you're a bit older. But when you're younger too, you have, other, you have other concerns. And mine, frankly, was my family and my children. And taking a, a, a step, which had, clearly had some risks um, like that, I probably would have done it if my kids had been younger. I'd have waited for the destiny results. However, um, I, I went on it and they were a bit older. And I felt, I, I, felt, I felt comfortable because, and I come to this in a second, I knew I was going to be very well looked after. Um, so my overall experience uh, of the trial, very positive. Um, as I'm, I know we're going to hear uh, this afternoon, the destiny results are very reassuring. Um, they look, I think, uh, pretty good. Um, I think if you got, and, and you would have, wouldn't you? But I mean, it's, it, it, I think it's important that you feel really confident and you, have, you trust and you have faith in your doctors you, know, you really feel comfortable that they, they know what you're do they're doing and they're really going to look after you and keep an eye on you. Um, just to give a little anecdote, when I had one of my positives, um, having had, you know, only ever had zeros after about month five, uh, I thought, oh, that's, that's a bit weird. Um, so I emailed my consultant and she said, I mean, it was a great response, she said, let others worry about this. You, know, you, you do your stuff and let others do the worrying for you. And that was a brilliant response. Um, so I think, you know, if you have got confidence, trust, and faith in your doctors, then, um, you know, you should feel confident and comfortable that you will be well looked after. And I think partly, I mean, it, this, is, this is a tricky one in many ways, but I did feel really comfortable being in a specialist centre. I knew I was going to be very well looked after with, you know, great nursing staff, brilliant um, clinicians. Uh, you know, they, they keep a really close eye on me. Um, and I think when you're Certainly to begin with in, a, in your sort of stopping experience, um, that's something I, I would personally feel uh, is something you, 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 know, you would, may want for, for a real comfort in taking that plunge. Overall, as I say, it's been, it's been a great experience. I'm glad I did it. Um, I'm now, so the Destiny Protocol was monthly visits for the first two years, two monthly after that. I'm now back to four monthly. So back to kind of where I was when I was on uh, treatment, um, and things seem pretty good and stable. Um, I'm very happy if anybody wants to sort of grab me over lunch and talk a bit more about it. I may or may not be around for the Q and A uh, later this afternoon, or, not for, or for, you know, maybe only for part of it. So if you do want to have, you know, a sort of one to one or, or other chat about it, I'm more than happy to, to speak. So for now, I'm going to hand over to Alistair, who's. Uh, just starting on a similar journey.